In the history of human aviation, there have been many uniquely designed aircraft, some of which resemble futuristic aircraft from science fiction movies due to their very advanced design. Even in today's eyes, these aircraft can be considered cutting-edge technology, such as the Dornier Du-31 transport aircraft. Recently, Stephanie Tompkins, director of the U.S. Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, said in a recent media interview that she is working with the U.S. Special Operations Command to develop a high-speed, vertical takeoff and landing transport aircraft so that troops can be in extremely difficult traffic in the location of rapid drop and transport missions. The name of the project is Speed Runway Independent Technology. It was previously thought that the U.S. military would likely develop new helicopters to achieve its goals. But in an interview, DARPA Director Stephanie Tompkins did not mention anything about the helicopter configuration. Instead, in the publicly released concept photos instead, there are two different configurations, but both are concept drawings of fixed-wing aircraft. Plus, Director Tompkins also pointed out that the three conditions of high speed, high maneuverability, and VTOL have been achieved in various forms by many different companies before, but an aircraft that can combine these three properties at the same time has not yet appeared. Therefore, many people inferred that DARPA's goal should be to create an entirely new transport aircraft capable of achieving all three properties. However, existing VTOL aircraft, such as the AV-8B, Yak-38, Yak-141, and F-35B, are fighters and do not meet DARPA's goal of a new transport aircraft. And the current VTOL aircraft require a lift fan propulsion system in the center of the fuselage, which makes it difficult to build a new transport aircraft with enough cargo space. So in this video, we talk about the differences between VTOL and conventional aircraft and how the V-22 and Do-31, the two aircraft that best meet DARPA's expectations, achieve vertical takeoff and landing. Vertical takeoff and landing or conventional takeoff and landing, these two types of takeoff and landing are different from each other except for the equipment of the aircraft itself. The biggest difference is the runway. VTOL aircraft require less runway. In wartime, even if the airfield is destroyed by enemy strikes, it does not prevent your aircraft from participating in the battle. The common way to deploy VTOL, besides land-based deployment, is to deploy them on large amphibious assault ships or light aircraft carriers. For example, in the United States, they are VTOL deployed to amphibious assault ships to provide fire support for the Marines during combat. The common models are AV-8B Harrier and F-35B. The F-35B aircraft are popular with European countries and US allies. These countries also want their own amphibious assault ships to have the combat capability of light carriers. For example, Japan's Izumo helicopter carrier or Britain's HMS Elizabeth both carry F-35BS. In fact, it is said to be VTOL fighters, but generally refers to vertical or short takeoff and landing. In this type of aircraft, the two compared. There are still more types of STOL. For example, the AV-8B, although it is 60 years old, but is the world's first actual VTOL fighter aircraft. This aircraft has participated in the Falklands War and achieved some success. However, its maximum speed was less than 1,100 km per hour. Some of the earlier models were even unable to fire medium-range missiles. It had no supersonic capability and had severe restrictions on takeoff weight and radius. But the aircraft's greatest advantage was its ability to vertical takeoff and landing, which largely made up for the deficiencies on the Navy's carriers. Its excellent deployment capability made the United States at that time were happy to pay for a number of independent conversion. From a technical point of view, unlike the CTOL aircraft, the Harrier uses deflector nozzle technology. In simple terms, it uses Newton's third law to push the aircraft up by the reaction force generated by the jet. However, because of the age of the Harrier, many of the technologies are not very mature, resulting in this type of takeoff and landing will make the engine reliability deteriorate, and the overhaul cycle is infinitely extended. However, the Harrier still pioneered the practical use of VTOL aircraft. The Yak-141 is the world's first VTOL aircraft with supersonic capability, largely improving the Harrier's poor maneuverability. The Yak-141 uses a main engine plus lift engine design to take off using the reaction force of airflow. Based on the Yak-38, 
the Yak-141 was developed with the goal of achieving interception and ground-to-sea attack. However, production was discontinued due to the collapse of the Soviet Union and airflow interference between the aircraft's twin front and rear engines, which eventually led to the crash of the prototype. Although the Yak-141 did not enter service, its design ideas influenced some later models. The third classic model is the US F-35B. The use of aerodynamic principles was another design idea in the design of the VTOL aircraft. The lift fan propulsion system of the F-35B uses the interaction with air to generate lift for takeoff. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, Lockheed Martin acquired some of the technical data of the Yak-141, borrowed some of its principles, and used the Rolls-Royce lift system to overcome the Yak-141's front-engine thermal airflow interference problem and make it a reliable and productive aircraft. The F-35B is the only aircraft in the fifth generation that can STOL and VTOL, but the combat radius of the F-35B is reduced by one-third compared to the F-35A and F-35C. Of the three models of the F-35, only the B model is the most wanted by the U.S. Marine Corps. Because the Marine Corps has a need for independent expeditionary operations overseas, its amphibious assault ships need to deploy some fixed-wing fighters. The Harrier and Hornet were once mainstay fighters. If the F-35B fully replaced these older aircraft, the Marine Corps' operational effectiveness would be dramatically improved. Through these three warplanes introduced earlier, we know that VTOL aircraft have the characteristics of rapid deployment and practical efficiency compared to CTOL aircraft. In the front and attack, ships can follow the ground forces deployment and attack, and the front support response speed is very flexible. But also relatively, VTOL aircraft comprehensive performance is weak. Its technical complexity, high failure rate, and most critically, low bomb load and small combat radius. This is also the current state of VTOL aircraft relative to the CTOL aircraft's biggest shortcomings. When it comes to VTOL transport aircraft, the first aircraft that comes to mind is the V-22 Osprey, but the Osprey is not quite the same as the three just mentioned, it is a tilt rotor, a hybrid of a fixed-wing aircraft and a helicopter, with the VTOL and emergency hover capability of a helicopter but also the faster speed and longer range of a fixed-wing aircraft. The Osprey is a good transport vehicle, and the technical concept of this type of aircraft, derived from the Soviet Mi-24 in the war in Afghanistan in the 1980s, embodies the powerful combat capability of the helicopter gunship. This gave the US a big shock, so the US then raised the need for higher speed and better performance helicopters, which then led to such a creative configuration as the V-22. But these aircraft are not as flexible as helicopter gunships, so no combat versions were developed. And it didn't fit what DARPA wanted in a new transport aircraft. To meet the three capabilities of high speed, high maneuverability, VTOL, and the large capacity characteristics of a transport aircraft, DARPA may be able to study the Dornier Du-31, after all, this is the world's only VTOL jet transport aircraft. The Dornier Du-31 transport aircraft was developed in the late 1950s and was designed and developed by the German Dornier Aviation Manufacturing Company. At the end of World War II, the West German Air Force was very worried about air attacks on its own airfields by Eastern Bloc forces, so it planned to develop an STOL aircraft as a response to unexpected war situations. Unlike the British, who were already developing the Harrier, Germany took a different approach and chose to develop a VTOL transport aircraft, which led to the Dornier Du-31. Let's take a look at a few things that DARPA might learn from. The Dornier Du-31 has a conventional transport fuselage structure with cantilevered upper monoplane wings and a cross-shaped tail layout. Under each wing is an engine pod, and there is a lift engine pod at the wingtip on both sides. The elevator of the cross-shaped tail is mounted on the vertical stabilizer of the vertical tail. At the center rear of the fuselage is a large cargo bay, with cargo and personnel entering and exiting through the tail hatch at the rear. Its cargo bay could accommodate 36 fully armed soldiers or 24 stretchers inside, with a payload of 3 to 5 tons. In those days, such a load was enough to play a very important support role in frontline operations. However, the maximum takeoff weight of the Dornier Du-31 is only 60.5 tons, which is low for a transport aircraft, so the new model to be developed by DARPA should be very different. 
most of the weight of the Dornier Du-31 comes from the weight of the engines. The Dornier Du-31 was equipped with a total of 10 engines, and the designers at the time put two Rolls-Royce B.53S in the engine bay in order to achieve VTOL. This engine was capable of producing 69 knots of thrust in a single unit. The engine did not have the same straight-through engine nozzle as today's aircraft engines, and the nozzle was not visible when looking directly at the engine pod from the rear. Its engine gas is pumped through the four deflectible nozzles on the side of the engine pod to achieve power output. The four deflectible nozzles on the side of the pod can direct the exhaust to be ejected in the directions of 30 degrees and 80 degrees backwards, so that VTOL can be achieved and deflected backwards to provide forward thrust after takeoff. This design, even today, is a genius design solution. In addition, the Dornier Du-31 is a 49.5-ton empty-weight transport aircraft, it is impossible to achieve VTOL with these two engines alone. Therefore, the genius designers of that time added a lift engine pod to the wingtip part of the aircraft. This pod contained for Rolls-Royce RB.162-4DS. This engine is capable of producing 20 knots of thrust in a single unit. There are a total of eight lift engines on both wingtips, all mounted with the nozzle facing downward, which is why it is the world's only jet VTOL transport. Its lift engines are only used to provide lift during VTOL. Therefore, during VTOL, the fairing at the top of the lift engine would open to provide air for the four engines inside to operate. Nowadays, the engine power of transport aircraft has been greatly improved, so the engine weight of the new transport aircraft developed by DARPA will not occupy most of its own weight. Its payload will probably be comparable to that of the C-130. If there is another breakthrough in the engine, the payload may even exceed that of the C-130H. In those days, a transport aircraft was equipped with 10 engines and also had a very complex power output direction so the control of the engines would be a technical problem. The new transport aircraft developed by DARPA will certainly learn from the Dornier Du-31, and the wingtip nozzle of the eight lift engines can be adjusted backward or forward 15 degrees. These nozzles are independent of each other. That's why the Dornier Du-31 can be steered after vertical takeoff by adjusting the nozzle direction of the wingtips. Moreover, after takeoff, what if there is a large amount of cargo carried in the fuselage cargo compartment, causing the fuselage to be unbalanced from front to back? To solve this problem, the Dornier Du-31 has four nozzles in the tail, two facing up and two facing down. And the nozzle can also be adjusted backward or forward by 15 degrees. The function is to adjust the pitch control of the aircraft after vertical takeoff. The tail nozzle is powered by a Rolls-Royce B.53 engine under the wing. With the combined effect of such a power system, the Dornier Du-31 transport aircraft could solve the stability problem of vertical takeoff. However, at that time, this power system also had a number of problems. The first problem was that it was difficult to start so many engines at the same time, and the control of various nozzles also had the problem of uneven power distribution. Therefore, in the early test, you will find that the aircraft wobble is particularly obvious. This problem was solved only after subsequent optimization and upgrading. The second problem is that with the wingtips of the eight engines pointed directly at the ground, a large amount of high-speed hot airflow will easily cause erosion of the ground. Moreover, the engine would inhale the exhaust gas again, causing the problem of inefficient engine operation. The designers at the time finally solved these problems by setting the nozzle angle at VTOL to 85 degrees rather than 90 degrees directly perpendicular to the ground. These are the things that DARPA can learn from. The Dornier Du-31's unique power system was arguably one of the cutting-edge technologies explored in VTOL technology during that era. However, as the world situation developed and the military's interest in VTOL declined sharply, the Dornier Du-31 was eventually cancelled, leaving only two prototypes to be preserved, which exist in the Manufacturer's Museum and the Deutsches Museum. Perhaps the new transport aircraft developed by DARPA in the future will be as efficient and convenient as the flying machine in the movie Starship Troopers.